welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Public Enterprises Minister Praveen Gordhan has appointed a new interim board for state-owned Danel. Rebecca Campbell tells us more. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Can you give us some background into the challenges that have faced Danel in recent years? The Danel story has been running uh, for a good and ill for, I think, over 20 years now. Uh, starting with um, the need to completely restructure the organization from what was theoretically a defense company, but in practice still functioned as a government department, into a modern commercially successful defense industrial group. And that started uh, under a CEO called Sean Liebenberg. Uh, he achieved significant success. His successor, Talib Sadiq, built upon that and advanced uh, the success. His successor, Riyaz Saluji, further advanced the project uh, with further success. So by uh, mid-2015, uh, Danel had been transformed almost out of recognition and was clearly on course to become a, a, a commercially viable company. It, it had problems. It, it, it still had a heavy debt burden. It, it still needed government guarantees. But it was clearly, had made huge advances and was clearly in the right course. Then in July 2015, the board was changed. And that was a normal rotation, uh, is, was the term used. Um, by the then Public Enterprises Minister, Lynn Brown. Within a few months, the, the board was changed in July, if I remember correctly. In September, Ria Saluji and the then Chief Financial Officer and the then Company Secretary were suspended on grounds that were never adequately explained pending an investigation watch, typical of the period in which Jacob Zuma was president of the Republic, never went anywhere and we never saw any results published. Um, the alleged uh, reason for this was the uh, takeover by Donnell of uh, British Aerospace Land Systems South Africa, BAE uh, Systems Group in London uh, had decided it wanted to get out of the wheeled armoured vehicle business and focus on specialised tracked armoured fighting vehicles. Uh, so it sold its local operation in Benoni to Donnell. That transaction was completely approved by the previous board and suddenly the new board seems to find it objectionable, or that was the impression given. Hmm. That seems to have been, and I think it's generally accepted, to have been a maneuver to get rid of Saluji and the chief financial officer and the company secretary because they were obstacles to what is now probably called state capture. The attempt by politically well-connected uh, business people to uh, basically rip off state-owned companies for staggering amounts of money by getting contracts that are overpriced or contracts that they get paid for but never fulfill. You know, uh, part of the whole grim story involving ESCOM and so on. Um, certainly. In the case of Donnell, it was centered around a strange venture called Donnell Asia, uh, which was, set, what was to be set up as a joint venture with a company called VR Laser Asia, which was in turn uh, part of uh, VR Laser Services, which had for many years been a, 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 a credible and respected partner of uh, Donnell, but ownership of VR Laser changed, changed uh, around that time. 
and it uh, became, became owned by a businessman called Salim Essa, who is closely associated with the Gupta family, who are seen as the quintessential example of politically connected businessmen involved in state capture in South Africa. Now, the concept in El Asia was great. In fact, reported it was Saluji's idea. But he was suspended before any decision was made on what partner. What was strange about it was that it was meant to be set up in Hong Kong. Now, the creation of Denel Asia was justified on the grounds uh, that Southeast Asia is a major target area for Denel, which it is. But if you look at the map, Hong Kong's not in Southeast Asia. A selection of Salim S as the business partner was uh, justified in the grounds that he has great knowledge of the Indian market. Hong Kong's further from India than it is from Southeast Asia. So the justifications did not gel with the location. And as, as um, uh, defense analyst Helmut Heitman pointed out uh, rather caustically, uh, most of the countries in Asia, Pacific, Southeast Asia, and even India who are building up their armed forces are doing so in response to the growth of Chinese military power. So putting Denel Asia's head office in what is admittedly autonomous, but is nevertheless part of China, is a very, was also a, 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 is a very strange decision. So anyway, it never went through. Uh, it was never authorized, but it was seen as uh, symptomatic of the new situation in Danel. And Danel's financial performance seems to have collapsed. Now, the um, what happened, we don't know because the, the information is not yet being made public, but its financial situation deteriorated enormously. And... Um, it's ended up in the situation that today it cannot pay all its suppliers. How will the appointment of the new interim board help the group? Well, it's a totally new board. No connection with the pre preceding board, which largely evaporated through resignations. You know, uh, the country got a new president, Cyril Ramaphosa, who was seen and is seen as the anti-Zuma and the Zuma, uh, the 2015 uh, board appointed under President Zuma at that time, kind of evaporated with people resigning uh, in rapid succession. It is a highly credible board very impressive people on it. Uh, they are going to focus, the, the, the chairwoman uh, made clear that the immediate focus is to focus on the financial situation of the company. Apparently, every month, Danelle is 350 million rand in deficit in terms of paying suppliers. So Danel's suppliers are in very difficult straits. The new board and um, the uh, recently appointed public enterprises, Mr. Pravin Gordon, made clear uh, it's going to be a tough period because there's no way they can turn things around overnight. But I think we can confidently say that this board will find out what happened why the company deteriorated so dramatically, so fast, where the money has gone or where they think the money has gone, and trying to and turn it around. But how long will it take to turn it around? I don't think that the board knows yet. Whether it will involve further restructuring of the group, I don't think the board knows yet. Whether it involves Units being closed down, sold off, uh, 
whether it involves job losses, again, I don't think the board knows yet. Although Danell has real assets. So uh, it does have capabilities that international defence groups would be interested in acquiring if they were put on the market. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see what they find and what decisions they make. Who are some of the key members of the new board? Well, uh, it's a very impressive board and I'm going to apologize to all the board members whose names I will not mention. But leading businessmen and women, uh, Talib Sadiq, the former CEO, is on the board. Zoli Koneni, who was a member of a previous Danel board, not the capture, for want of a better term, board, is all, it has been reappointed to the board. So those are two people who already know Danel, who already know the business. Um, the former president CEO of the C uh, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, Dr. Sibu Sisu Sabisi is a member of the board. Cheryl Carolas, uh, who among other things uh, was uh, a South African High Commissioner to London, is on the board. Uh, General T.T. Matanzama, who was a previous Chief of Joint Operations in the South African De National Defence Force, is on the board. And it is a very prestigious board. And uh, attending the press conference and chatting to Danelle head office staff, you could see how happy they were. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.